Mark Adams joins me, Chief Executive of Community Integrated Care, one of the UK's largest health and social care charities. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mark. Um, Hi, Sheila. Your, your thoughts, I know you've been speaking about this and reacting to this um, over, the, over the day so far. Um, it, well, why don't we go back to March, shall we? What, what, were you, what were you dealing with then in March in terms of procedure and communication from the authorities? Well, I mean, I think we can go back to February when we could see what was happening in Washington and Italy and Spain. And obviously, it was very clear that COVID um, was very, very dangerous for anyone in a care environment. And we were waiting, obviously, to see leadership and action from the government. Um, many of the providers of uh, social care across the UK voluntarily went into lockdown um, in the first week or 10 days in March because they could see what was coming. And I think it was still about the 13th of March when the Prime Minister was going to the Cheltenham Gold Cup and letting Spaniards come over for the Atletico Madrid-Liverpool game. Mm. Um, and really, at that stage, there was very little guidance. You know, there was um, you know, requests from hospitals to clear their wards by transferring patients without testing into care homes. And you were being told at that stage you didn't need to wear PPE or yes. only the most basic of PPE. Well, well, it's funny, at the same time as, as you were handling that, I was taking calls on this programme from people working in the care sector, both residential and community-based. And because I was, I was putting, call, putting questions out there saying, what's happening? You know, what, what's, what are you now having to deal with? I was making preparations for my own mother uh, who lives in her own home. She's not in any, any residential care, but she has carers coming into the house. So I, I was already thinking, um, asymptomatic or not, um, I, you know, th this person needs protection so here's what we need to do about it and and I, I put questions Sorry. out to people I put questions out to people and so many carers said to me we're being told by the authorities not by their care home managers but business as usual yeah I, I mean the biggest single mistake the, the World Health Organization in February was saying the only way to fight a pandemic is test 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 and, th and that was at the end of february um we abandoned our testing program until neil ferguson produced that report showing how many people potentially might die mm. and then we suddenly kind of re rewrite what the government's plans were but when you when you look at the majority of the deaths that occurred in april and may uh testing didn't actually occur in nursing homes uh, until late May and even then it was sporadic and it was really only in the last three weeks that we've seen people tested on and, a routine basis. And by that point, by the end of May, the, the majority of those deaths caused by the peak had happened. Yeah, and, and obviously, if you've got an invisible enemy with potentially people that are asymptomatic, the only way to be absolutely certain of keeping it out of an environment like that is to test on a weekly basis and ideally twice weekly. And this ring of steel that Matt Hancock refers to just hasn't existed. You know, it, it, it's a figment of political spin. And we're in a situation where the social care system that's faced into COVID-19 with a front line on minimum wage, no sickness benefits, very little support, is now being kind of targeted by the most senior politician in the country that the deaths might somehow be their, their fault. And I think, frankly, that's appalling. Thank you, Mark Adams, for joining us. I know you have to go. Thank you very much indeed. Mark Adams, Chief Executive of Community Integrated Care, one of the UK's largest health and social care charities.